He's on top of the world, but you'd never guess it. Steve Davis back as the world number one provisionally, but he's been very much second best so far in the final of the Thailand Open against James Wattenaar. When we left it this afternoon, Davis was trailing by seven frames to two, and Wattenaar was in really scintillating form. Very good evening and welcome to this final session of the Thailand Open snooker from the Queen's Park Imperial Hotel in Bangkok. James Wattenaar against the six times world champion Steve Davis. Uh, the players back out, ready for the final session. Wattenaar very much the local hero, not quite treated as a god. They have enough of those in Thailand, but not too far off. But in this snooker mad country, his opponent Steve Davis is much admired too. He has a huge fan club as well. But he'd still upset plenty of ties if he can stage what would be one of the comebacks of the snooker season so far. Let's just show you what's happened so far, though I'm sure that Steve Davis won't want to be reminded of this. With Wattenaar running in three century breaks, one of them a total clearance. There it is. Three centuries from Wattenaar then in frames three, four, and in frame nine. That one, four, two total clearance, the highlight in frame four. Wattenaar in control, leading by seven frames to two, just two frames away from victory then. We'll join frame 10 with Wassenaar at the table. There's no score. Our commentators are Willie Thorne and first, Phil Yates. Foul four, Steve Davis. <coughs> well, surely he's got to call a miss for that one because he got a full pack to aim at and although he's only missed them by a coat of paint, in my book, that's a miss, Willie. Yes, if it had finished an inch away, it would have called a miss, but of course, it's very hard to call it a miss. It was only a sixteenth of an inch, but you know, you either got to make the rule and stand by it or not have it at all. And it was a very easy avenue to be able to get the escape. But this match is far too entertaining to worry about little things like that at the moment. This man at the table is in full flight. Yes, it didn't really make that much difference because I'm sure on the second attempt he will have made the escape. Certainly judging the pace of the table very well as you can see from that shot. to have no easy escape as far as safety is concerned, may be forced into taking this one on. Well, just misses the enough was his problem, and has it just come out to let him clip this red in the top corner pocket? The way he addressed the cue ball, I thought he was going for it, but he, ha he has actually left this ball. Well, he's human after all. He does miss now and again. Yes, well, you get the feeling that Davis's best policy would be one of aggression. Doesn't really stand to lose much now. He's 7-2 behind. I think if he opened his shoulders and went for a few, we could see a little bit of a turnaround. If Steve Davis was to lose this match, it would be nice to see him make the uh, score look respectable because he had played some fantastic snooker this week, especially his victories over Peter Ebden and Alan McManus. Although he's not scoring 
as well as he sometimes does. His tactical play, I believe this week, has been as good as I've ever seen before. Nine. Yes, William, that's taken him to number one in the provisional world rankings for the first time since May 1990. That was when Stephen Hendry won the world title. I know Davis is very pleased with that. He said that in most sports, when you lose your number one spot, you're supposed to fall gracefully down the rankings, but I simply refuse to do so. He's 36, he's been a professional for 16 years, and he's still got an insatiable appetite for success. Eleven. Of course, when you consider that he's doing all this with a new cue as well, Phil, I believe he changed it at the beginning of this season, and that makes it even more of an achievement. Sometimes takes players two or three years to get Twelve. used to a new cue. Steve Davis did it in the summer of last year. Yes, the piece of wood which took him to six World and six UK titles has been abandoned in favour of this new cue. Certainly, it's brought him a fair measure of success this season. He's reached the quarterfinals, at least, of all seven ranking events so far. Nineteen. Well, he has been a bit fortunate there. That was more of an aggressive shot from Steve. He's been actually going into the pack with a lot less power than that, just trying to bring the odd one or two out. But there you can clearly see there's a gap through the reds. So he's a bit fortunate there. Twenty. And now has a very good chance to make a sizable break. Mm -hmm. Such has been 25. the such has been the dominance from James Rotana. Steve Davis is yet to register his first fifty break in this match. And how many times do we see Steve Davis play nine frames without a 50 break? But he has a good chance here, though. 26. We've talked about the great comebacks, and of course, Steve Davis, who's very knowledgeable about the game, he'll be well aware that Watanar has occasionally let quite substantial leads go by the wayside. The two most recent examples, he led 5-0 in the semi-final of last year's World Championship and was beaten 16-9 by Jimmy White and he led Stephen Hendry 5-1 in the UK Championship that was in the quarter-final this year or this season I should say and was beaten 9-7 so not always the best of front runners <laughs> if Steve's going to take the black this time, there doesn't appear to be any more loose reds. Does have the perfect angle to play the cannon. And he would ideally like to hit the middle one of the five reds that we can see spread across the pack. If he can hit that one, he's almost guaranteed to be on the choice of two reds. That's the red he'll be playing for. Let's see if he can hit it full ball. Well, he didn't get the banana at all on the white. Usually when you play at that speed, the white actually does a, a semicircle. And that's what he was playing for. And he'll be disappointed with that. Didn't seem to get the reaction on the cue ball at all. And all he's proceeded to do is not too red safe. Will he risk the double? Well, there might be some value in it, Willie, because I don't think that red nearest the middle pocket will pot. And if it does, it's only going to topple in. <coughs> the thing, of course, in his favour is the two reds that have gone safe. Steve's not tempted by this double, though. He's probably going to try and put another red on the side cushion. The double actually looks almost the perfect angle. 
He's just having a little look now to see whether that red nearest the right hand middle pocket is potable. No, no, no risks. He knows if he's going to get it back into this match. He certainly needs to win the remaining three frames before the first session interval. And there goes another red onto the 41. side cushion. Steve Davis. So will he still no 50 break? But quite a commanding position. 45 mil Davis leads here in frame 10. Whiten is certainly taking the opportunity to open those reds up. That's the difference between these two players. Mm, Steve doesn't really want to move this red off the cushion. You can see the one just behind the pink. But of course, that's going to be knocking the red next to it towards that bottom corner pocket. That's what's causing the problem at the moment. Of course, moving the, he does have two other safe reds on the cushion, so maybe it's not too much of a problem to bring one back out. But he will be trying to put it on the opposite side cushion. Well, he's kissed the blue. Well, that, that could be really costly. Four. Those couple of reds on the side cushion being the only obvious obstacle to what in a Making an emphatic response here. He can certainly Five. eat into Davis's lead, though. Not the best of positional shots, that. He must have got a kick there, Phil. It's very unusual to see a player four or five inches out of position. And I can only believe he must have had a bad contact there on that cue ball. Well, the way James has been playing, it wouldn't surprise me seeing him take this blue in either to the centre pocket, where you can just see it pots, or even into the top pocket. He's actually ball. playing it into the centre. Not a lot of room. Wow, well, what a great shot again into the middle pockets. <laughs> Just overrun the cue ball a Ten. little bit too far. Looks to be in no man's land. That red nearest the middle pocket. Looks as though it will pot, but it's a very acute angle. Absolutely no room for manoeuvre, and if you can get through to this red, that will be a bonus. Eleven. Well, James has been fortunate there. I think he had to play with a little bit of left-hand side to swing the white round <laughs> to be able to pot that red. But when you overrun a positional shot, such as James did then, you consider yourself very fortunate to be on the red he was. Of course, now the two reds are becoming vastly important for Steve Davis. It looks like James is going to clear the remaining three loose reds without too many problems. That will put him right back into this frame. And, of course, starts to have to worry about leaving himself an angle on either pink or black to be able to move those three reds back into play again. Fifteen. This is one of the very few, few times when players would sometimes play the kiss from red to red rather than risk on the colour. Playing a kiss into those reds on the side, you're almost bound to be on pink or blue. But he won't be doing it this time. 21. Twenty-two. 
And now he'll probably try and leave himself an angle on this red to be able to play the cannon into the three reds. If he doesn't get the angle, of course, he's then got to get the angle on the next colour. Well, he's come to eye, so now he has to leave himself the angle on pink or black. 29. Seems to be too straight to be able to play the cannon this time. So now can screw back and leave an angle on the pink. Certainly. And there you see the absolutely perfect angle now. He could actually get all three reds out with one shot here. Well, bar the double kiss, Phil, it has certainly got two of them out. That was a little bit unlucky. 36. Well, it looks as though he's going to take this spread on to the top right-hand pocket as we look. And this is a big shot. These shots cutting back into a blind pocket, very difficult. That's always the tendency six. to Game just enough. slightly undercut them. What's more, he's left Davis in. Nine points to difference. Steve Davis, 45. And although Game Davis has got a good chance, plenty of work to be done. Obviously, the same problem now appears itself for Steve Davis. He's now got to get the nice angle on pink to be able to move the reds. And he's gone too One. far. Will he, will he play to get on the double this time? <coughs> Appears to be virtually dead straight on the pink. There you can clearly see it. No angle whatsoever. Well, this time we may see him go for the double. He leads Seven. by 16 points. Is it worth the risk this time? <laughs> Not only worth the risk, but now appears to have the absolute Eight. perfect angle on the black. He's just having another little look to see whether that red can sneak into the middle pocket. If it can, he's got the perfect angle to drop onto it. If he doesn't think it pots, he has the perfect angle to move it. Well, if it does sneak in, Willie, 15. you couldn't be a better position than this. <laughs> 25, the difference. 15. So just this blue and Watana will need a snooker. absolutely must 21. frame for Davis to win. Still not quite over the line yet because Watton are quite capable of getting one snooker but with the disappearance of that yellow 23. I think we're pretty safe to assume that Davis is going to reduce his deficit to seven frames to three. Twenty-six. Steve Davis has always had a tenacious attitude. Should, certainly displaying that right here. 35. 35. Right, so 41 and 35. Sufficient to give Steve, Steve Davis the 10th frame. James Watt in a seven, Steve Davis three. You're watching Sky Sports.
Steve Davis still not out of this final then. It's James Watanar, seven. Steve Davis, three. Remember, the winning post is nine. Here's frame 11. It's Watanar to break. James Watanar, seven. Steve Davis, three. And Watanar needs two more frames to win the title. Steve Davis, well, he's deep in concentration. The so he frame. needs to be. James Watanar to break. You'd have to think that...